final day session on the short term course on biodiversity, status, services, and management practices organized and conducted by the Department of Botany, PG Diploma in Biodiversity, Kongunodo Arts and Science College, Panto. The world is round and the place which may seem like the end, but it may also be the beginning. I take this opportunity to invite Dr. R. Thirunyana Sambandan, sir, Assistant Professor in Botany, Kongunodo Arts and Science College, Pantur, to welcome one and all gathered here and to introduce our distinguished chief guest, Dr. S. Karpsami, sir, Associate Professor from the Majura College, Madurai. Please, sir. Thank you, Dr. Kartika. Uh, good afternoon to all. It's my pleasure to welcome you all for last day of short term course in biodiversity status, services, and management practices. First, I would like to welcome our Honorable President, Dr. Archa Misal, who is the pillar and the architect of this great institution. I am happy to welcome our beloved secretary, Dr. C.A. Vasugi, ma'am, cream up cup, and our mentor in all our activities. I welcome you, ma'am. It's my pleasure to welcome our respected principal, Dr. Lakshmana Sami, sir. He is our guiding star and supporter of all our activities. I welcome you, sir. I welcome our Dean R&D, Dr. Paul Sami, sir. Dean Academics, Dr. Madan Sangar, sir. Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Chinni Sami, Yenam. Head Department of Botany and my fellow colleagues. I'm happy to welcome all participants. Now, it's my great pleasure to welcome our honorable resource person, Dr. Karpu Sami, sir. Associate Professor, Department of Botany, Madura College, Madurai. Basically, Sar is a botanist and he has completed his PhD in botany from Gandhigram Rural Institute, Dindical, Tamil Nadu. Subsequently, Sar has completed his postdoctoral research from Krishna Devaraya University, Anandpur, Andhra Pradesh. Sar has over 25 years of research experience and more than 15 years of teaching experience in the field of botany. Sar has received several awards from central and state government agencies. So far, Sar has published 13 books and more than 10 books are able to publish. So far, Sar has published 125 research articles in various national and international journals. Sar has presented more than 75 papers in national and international conferences. And so far, Sar has produced four PhDs and three are in pipeline. Such a wonderful and an excellent researcher today we are having for our biodiversity short term course. Moreover, SAR has uh, different specializations like plant tissue culture, plant biotechnology, plant taxonomy. In association with his uh, postdoctoral mentor, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Karbusami has published numerous new species to the scientific community. This is the great achievement made by Dr. Karbusami, sir. So it's my great pleasure and honor to welcome such a wonderful and an excellent researcher in the field of botany for today's, uh, today's function, biodiversity, short-term course in biodiversity, status, services, management. So once again, I welcome you all and I welcome Dr. Karbusami, sir, for this short-term course on biodiversity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sambandam, sir, for introducing me with very nice words. And uh, shall I start? Thank you, yes, sir. Yes, sir, you can start, sir. Okay, thank you. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to share uh, my opinions and ideas uh, on uh, the biotechnological interventions of biodiversity and human well-being. And also, I'd like to thank all the uh, the faculty members of the botany and botany fraternity in uh, Kongunodo Arts and Science College, Coimbatore. And I uh, also may extend my thanks to uh, all the deans, but especially Dr. Paul Swami sir, Dr. Paul Subramanian sir, and uh, Dr. Uh, uh, recently the principal sir, and all other uh, members of the, uh, the Kongunadu Arts Scholar College and Teachers Community. And also, I, uh, my special congratulations and thanks to the Secretary Ma'am, uh, Dr. Vasuki, uh, for recently she has elected as a 
the syndicate member, go the governor nominee also, on behalf of myself, I, I express my uh, thanks and congratulations. And thank you one and all for all the delegates who are all uh, uh, sitting from different uh, uh, places. We are all connecting together with this uh, the web line. And today I would like to present the title Biotechnological Interventions on Biodiversity and Human Well-Being. You know, last uh, uh, 10 days, so last nine days, you have uh, been experienced with uh, different titles. I have gone through the titles uh, uh, covered with all the aspects of biodiversity. biodiversity. In the last uh, title, this is uh, related to technology. So that's why uh, I, I have uh, placed with the last person of this uh, uh, today, uh, uh, the program. You know, the biodiversity, a uh, contraction of biological diversity supports everything in nature that living organisms need to survive food, water, medicine, and habitat. The biodiversity is a complex of web of ecosystem, species, and genetics. The human are interwoven into this too. When just a few stands are lost in that shared environment, our own health is uh, threatened. So cutting too many links in this uh, uh, safety net may unravel it all. So in the last few decades, we have used up a lot of land to build our cities, farm, farms, industries. And in doing so, we have destroyed habitats and displayed several species. As uh, uh, that uh, urban and the peri-urban peri areas expand, the pristine natural space disappeared, and closer contact with the animals allows more disease to pass uh, between human and other species. So as a result, a new and emerging global pandemics are increasingly zoonotic in origin. So how do we make our living spaces are more resilient and more livable? So in this lecture, we are going to discuss pros and cons of uh, biotechnological interventions on biodiversity with the relevant to human living environment. You know, the last, uh, almost all these lectures, they have highlighted the importance of biodiversity. The biodiversity, the first most important, uh, it is for serving food, shelter, clothing, medicine and drugs, industrial raw materials, and finally germplasm and genetic stocks. These are all providing and only the source from biodiversity. So it also provides for clean environments and water for human being, that helps to conserve soil and water resources, and this regulates, purify the water and nutrient flow in ecosystem. So everything, the biodiversity is interpinning with the environment. So we should concern the environment for everything. So lots, lots of biodiversity. We know we are uh, uh, expecting or we are uh, listed out so many reasons for biodiversity loss. First one is the habitat loss. So most serious threat to expansion of human activities, you, you must remember here human activities, only the anthropogenic pressure, that is the main reason for habitat loss. And finally, climatic, coupled with the climatic factors like flooding, climate change, and salination factor uh, with man-mad clim climatic phenomena leads to habitat change. And finally, agricultural biodiversity is including hybrid crops and introduction of new crop varieties, great loss of wild biodiversity and natural germplasm. So here we are inputting our technology you know, for the production of hybrids and other the new gem blossoms. So the indirect factors contributing loss of biodiversity altered land use patterns, poverty, increased populations, inequitable land distribution, economic and political policies, and and strain. So these are the reasons for uh, uh, many uh, uh, that's a bio, uh, that's a loss of biodiversity or the depletion of biodiversity. The impact of biodiversity. You know, the impact of biodiversity, it is uh, the impact of biotechnology on biodiversity. Now the biotechnology, you know, the CBD, Convention on Bi Biological Diversity, so defined biotechnology is uh, any technological application that uses biological systems, living organisms or derivatives thereof 
to make or modify product or processes for specific use. So this is a this is mentioned by the CBD. In a broad sense, the definition covers many of the tools and techniques which have been commonly used in agriculture and food production, processing and utilization. So in the narrow sense, however, it is encompasses DNA techniques, molecular biology and productive technological applications dealing primarily with gene splicing and recombination and genomics. So these are all the areas of biotechnology. It is uh, finally this impact on biodiversity. So biotech, we are just inputting our technology or manipulation of, of for our own purpose of this system. We are ultimately exploiting the biodiversity. And we have compiled so many uh, books and uh, book series of biodiversity in India, nearly eight volumes we have compiled. You know that before we're going to the biodiversity and impact of biodiversity, we should know the development of biotechnology. You know, the development uh, uh, means the initial stages and before the year 1800, we do not know any technology. At that time, the people have made their own life with uh, some kind of uh, the simple uh, making tools. At that time, they have, uh, they have mentioned that the only discoveries are called biotechnology. So it's developing before that year, it termed as just discoveries. So after 1,800 years, the middle of the 20th century, the biotechnologies were developing with scientific evidence. Before that, they are not getting any evidence. Just they have invented some techniques they have uh, that is useful their life. So after uh, 1,800 years of our, our 20th century, the current century, the biotechnology start to examine and review the process in order to solve the puzzle of biotechnology. Each of the findings by scientists or biotechnologists has created the path for new next discoveries. For example, here John Mendel, who is known as the father of modern genetic, has studied the transfer of genetic information by using the plants. He has uh, proposed that invisible internal units of information account for observable traits. So like that, that discoveries also, they have discovered, but something, they are invented some kind of technology. And last stage in modern technology, modern biotechnology, which starts after the end of World War II. So many discoveries have been founded. Uh, almost all basic tools and technologies were available for the scientists to undergo their research. This important scientific discovery is also aided by the basic concept which have been elucidated by the earlier scientists. One of the example, uh, the major findings during this period, the discoveries of DNA as the genetic material by Watson and Crick. Yes, that uh, the last uh, uh, that the invent by the for the uh, field of biotechnology only behind the the DNA. So that was uh, 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 that, that was discovered by Watson and Crick. Later, Jacob and Monard has proposed the concept of operon in, in 1961, and followed by the Kohler and uh, Milstein in 1975 with the concept uh, concept of uh, cytoplasmic hybridization. And many things nowadays we are reaching the the, the climax stage of uh, biotechnology. You know, the, bi the application of biotechnology in every field today, today in uh, poultry, in vaccine production, transgenic animals, in medicine and drug production, genetically modified organisms, drug discovery, agriculture, physiculture, and every field of uh, biological disciplines now we have applied the technology. So that's why we are uh, uh, now uh, uh, talking about the biotechnology. And ultimately, all this field only on biodiversity. Just you look into that, everything it is getting from the biodiversity, starting from the microbial system to the macro organisms or from since, uh, to human beings. So impact of genetically modified crops to biodiversity. Now we are going to see one by one, which are the systems we are mainly used from the biodiversity for human well-being. So both we are going to discuss positive and negative impact of biodiversity. You know that, uh, so biotechnology has application of four major, major industrial areas, including healthcare, crop production and agriculture, non-food uses of crops and other products, 
uh, and environmental uses. So these are the four major areas we are going to concern about the, the bi biotechnological impacts on biodiversity. So first one is agriculture biodiversity. The use of herbicide tolerance and bacillus thuringiensis is genetically modified crops can have positive impact on biodiversity and some uh, negative impacts are also so this allows management of weeds and insects in a specific way and permits flexibility on herbicide application and timing of application. And genetic modification pro produces genetically modified animals, plants, and organisms. If they are introduced into environment, they can affect biodiversity. This is a negative impact. For example, existing species can be overrun by more dominant new species. Aside the, the, by the way, it will develop super weeds because of the same transferred genes may uh, through the gene flow, it goes to the, the wild biodiversity also. So you can see this uh, uh, map as of uh, 2013, genetically modified crops are grown, are imported, are used in the field trial research in more than 70 countries of the world. You can all the, the green portion of the, the world map, you can see that they are all growing more than 60 varieties of uh, crops in the year 2016, sorry, 2013. Now you can just imagine now after seven years, how it will be extended the areas to other countries also. So all those that orange red color maps, this is imported. They are importing uh, uh, the genetically modified crop products and uh, other areas they are doing the field trials. So, and you can see this map, it is only 2004 map. So now we are in 2020. You can see the, the number of crops are growing in the uh, countries. So that's a genetically modified crops. Uh, yeah, India shows the blue color. It is around 0 0.5 million hectares. That's especially the BT cotton is growing. That was recorded only 2004. Even USA, you can show more than 17 types of uh, uh, the crops, genetically modified crops are growing more than 47.6 million hectares. So these are the data it is indicating nowadays our biotechnology play a major role for the food production, particularly on the crops, genetically modified crops. You can see the, the uh, uh, that application of biodiversity in agriculture. This, this is more important. So benefit of agriculture biotechnology include uh, improved yield from crops, reduced vulnerability of crops to environmental stresses, increased nutritional qualities of food crops, improved taste, texture, or appearance of food, reduced dependence on fertilizers, pesticides, and other agrochemicals, and the production of high yield varieties. Isn't it? By the way, of these are the improvement making the traits of the crop plants by the, the breeding production technology, our genomics, our changes in the biochemistry. Ultimately, these kind of techniques will be input on the plants and output we are getting more yield varieties. So it is a biotechnology in agriculture. So next one is biotechnology and biodiversity. So everything is from the biodiversity. So biotechnology means it's ultimately it is depending on the biodiversity. So it can be uh, it can be applied in different fields of biodiversity. It covers a variety of techniques and applications that allow changes and improvements in living organisms to provide desirable products for man's use. Biotechnology is presently used for the conservation, evaluation, and utilization of biodiversity, particularly for uh, the important crops and what are the useful plants to be for our only human beings. In uh, its a various level, we can apply in taxonomy and identification also, in conservation and preservation of species, and enhanced production of biomaterials. So this is important because only we are directly useful uh, the uh, the product getting from the any kind of a diversity from microbial diversity or plants or animals means the technology we are applying that's why we call it as biotechnology 
you know, prediction of biodiversity resources. This is most important today. Why? Because so now the human population is increasing day by day in geometric ratio. So doubling, doubling of the uh, numbers of uh, that that our uh, the population is reaching the climax in every country. But the, our land resources, uh, food resources are very limited. So we have to increase the yield parallelly to the growing population. So that's why we should assess or monitor or predict the resources. So suppose the, the present rate or uh, the, the rate of increase of human population, it will continue the, through the years in the future. What will happen? How will, who will provide the food for all this population? So our land resources are limited. Our diversity resources are limited. Nowadays, we are doing prediction. Suppose this uh, source of fuel is there, how many days is suppose uh, we are it will uh, uh, we can use so present uh, situation will be continued, we do not know. So this techniques, uh, several techniques we are implementing for uh, prediction of biodiversity resources, either uh, as a directly from uh, either it is directly from uh, it's a directly from uh, uh, the diversity or from the or from the indirect from the diversity isn't it so this is most important field several kind of technology we are adopting for the the measurement or the monitoring of biodiversity for prediction methods next one is biotechnology on clothing and fiber after the next to the food sustaining life uh, the uh, Cloth and shelter is much important for all kind of human beings or our population, human population. So clothing and fiber, there are also a lot of uh, the technology, the technology we are uh, implementing for uh, uh, today's clothing. So it plays a crucial role in production of natural fibers with highly improved and modified properties besides providing opportunities for development of absolutely new polymeric uh, uh, materials. The natural fibers uh, under study are cotton, wool, and silk. These are all natural, but nowadays we are improving and by means of uh, manipulation technologies, genetic improvement, uh, and uh, several kind of improvements we are, uh, we are implementing in the field, production of new kind of fibers. So enzymes are used routinely to wash and bleach textiles. At the, uh, the, uh, at the time of production to give jeans and denim look or to uh, prevent wool from shrinking today uh, there's a improved wool improved fiber can be the how uh, produced uh, through the technology a new wave of technology would take this a step further the recently involved in medicine uh, disposable garments medicine uh, that is a uh, 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 medical textile separately there's a medical textile is, uh, is entirely separate field they have produced some industries you know recently corona infection is happening and uh, some projects also asked from many of our uh, the government and non-governmental bodies for, for the production are the the techniques for the uh, the virus free or virus uh, uh, that's a repellent uh, cloths and fibers. This is most important field today. You know the coronavirus is attaching only on the the head protein, spike head protein. First, it is a step of the uh, that uh, relations between our association of any other body. The, you know the coronavirus is having a thorns like appearance on the surface. That is a spike protein. The spike protein in different parts: stock protein and head protein. Head protein only the first attachment process it is happening. That head protein is uh, uh, fortunately it is dissolvable in oil and the detergent material. That's why uh, their uh, government and everybody uh, we are telling uh, every time we have to wash our hands with soap. It is dissolved, the head protein immediately dissolve on the soap uh, detergent or soap solution. So this kind of things we are thinking about how we can make that anti and repellent material coated on the fiber means automatically that we can avoid the contact of viruses. So this kind of technology nowadays improving through the biotechnology and also several cloths nowadays made under the 
the technological improvement, uh, the lower water consumption, and like that fiber improvement of fiber, no trees and plants even directly consumed from uh, some other raw materials, no wood pulping process, low energy use, low use of no low use of land. So these are the techniques through the biotechnology. We can conserve the nature, uh, but uh, the production of uh, the safety, uh, the clothing. So these are also important and field next one is the biotechnology and medicine yes medicine is important uh, uh, that uh, uh, things for our day-to-day -day life because we we now everyone we are taking at least a single medicine for every day isn't it so it is an important field that is ultimately provided by the biodiversity so medicine is ultimately it's a derived from the biodiversity so medical biotechnology is defined as the application of biotechnology tools for producing medicinal products that can be used for the diagnosis prevention or treatment of diseases the best known product of medical biotechnology are antibiotics that are used to treat bacteria infection and other kind of infections also for example by the rt pcr now only we are getting a false result even corona diagnosis suppose uh, now you can just imagine without the uh, the techniques rt pcr how can we uh, confirm the infection of corona no other way so all other tests are uh, even sometime it will uh, uh, give the false result only we are confirmation result of a corona infection through the rt pcr only so medicine, medicine is derived from starting from the bio, there's a microbial biodiversity to the macrofauna, even marine biodiversity. Or nowadays, a lot of technological improvement we are getting from uh, different other sources. Uh, so it's a wide variety of plants, animals, and fungi are used as a medicine, are producing the medicinal product, uh, so essential vitamins, painkillers, etc. So many animals are also known to self-medicate using plants and other materials available to them. Some macrofaunas are wild faunas they know, which are the plant as a source of medicine. So uh, even they have tested and genetically they have that uh, phenomena. Uh, it is uh, the genetically bounded uh, characters are there for many animals. They should know the plants and other things are medicinal purpose. You can, uh, so this is more important today, plants which help in boosting your immunity. This is also, uh, but we are included in the, uh, the biotechnological field, but uh, now we are following every uh, day in our home for uh, the combating the, the corona infection. You can see the garlic, mint, tulsi, or uh, ginger. These are all the important plants. They have a lot of uh, compounds, that is a phytochemicals, which are all, uh, it is, uh, it is having a lot of immune power or it is against to the microorganism it can uh, it can uh, compare with many kind of diseases so these are all important sources but we have to confirm because every plant is an industry they are uh, they are producing more than 200 or 300 number of phytochemicals that is a secondary metabolites but we should characterize which one needs act against the particular viruses or organisms or any other infectious agents so these are all the imports now it is a the popular field because of the immune boosting plants and many plants are there because they are also commonly used in our day-to-day -day life but how we'll use what is the technology technology we have to implement for the using a plant against particular disease that is more important so this is another field of uh, biotechnology yes Biodiversity is providing a lot of medicine. And I have written a book, Carluma, Anti-Obesity Plants. It, now it is a popular medicine among the pharma, pharmaceutical industries. You can see the bottles, Carluma, Fumbriata, just it is a, the plant extract they have made as a capsule. Uh, so not in India, that is an abroad, but plant is ours. We have only this uh, Carluma group, we have 16 species available in India. All species are having that uh, particular phytochemical uh, thing that is a carlumboside. It's a very essential uh, bioresources, but we do not know where it is uh, there. First, we should search our biodiversity. Still, it is providing a lot of resources. This is an example for uh, uh, that's a biodiversity medicine. And similarly, in this, um, uh, that uh, uh, more recently, we have uh, published another one book that is a Camptothesin and Camptothesin producing plant. 
and so what is the importance of gamtotrypsin means uh, it is uh, actually it's a cancer treating uh, uh, drug now it is available in market and next to the taxol taxol is uh, also it's uh, derived from plants uh, daxus baketa that is uh, they are growing only in himalaya but next to the taxol in the market using the camptothecin and uh, popularly that was first isolated from the chinese hobby tree chinese hobby tree that's a camptotheca acuminata that's why that uh, compound named as the camptothecin but now the more concentrated and the more uh, Uh, that's actively uh, 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 active principles that was isolated only in Indian plants. Not the Podaitis pneumoniana, that is the commonly growing in Western Ghat. But now the population is dwindling after the introduction of this drug. And recently, many other nearly 53 species of our Western from our Western Ghats, it is yielding campotheism. So we have compiled and their biochemistry and their uh, uh, that's a biotechnological application and what are the phytochemical analogs. We have compiled and published in this book uh, in Elsevier. That's you can see the campotheism. This is also an example for bi biodiversity medicine. So our biodiversity, natural bi biodiversity, is still is. Uh, the producing a lot of uh, and it is having a lot of uh, resource for us so we have to search and you know new generation medicine yes we are all looking to the the new generation medicine nowadays recently the world has been covered with a wave of fourth industrial revolution but according to industry the concept is so diverse that is that it is still difficult to define the fourth industrial revolution as one entity so among the possible denialisations the emerging fourth industrial revolution will probably be the next generational uh, revolution across the world biomedical industry and uh, fishing knowledge intensive science such as physics chemistry life science and engineering combined together uh, and the new generation medicine also we are awaiting it will be probably that is based on the dna and rna so dna vaccine rna vaccine yet to come definitely it will come that is a new generation medicine only through the nanotechnology and uh, maybe it is uh, combined with some other technology also that is artificial intelligence artificial organ development by three dimensional printing technology nanotechnology and the development of new drugs are now the most representative field so this is an important field today and the the uh, biotechnology also it will provide the industrial raw material you know all industries that is uh, they are depending on the raw material for their production it's one of the key technology in the transition from an economy based Uh, on fossil fuels to one base a uh, one end and based on renewable sources also so that's why this industrial biotechnology is much important and ultimately it will exploit the biodiversity all industries ultimately it is exploiting the biodiversity so it is uh, raw materials only from the Uh, by the they derived only from the biodiversity and now it's because of the implementation of technology we can get from the culture based the biotech manufacturing process and particularly challenging and critical task nowadays the technology with the technology in different field so we can have a white biotechnology blue biotechnology red biotechnology and green biotechnology so what is white biotechnology so in the modifications and production of enzymes the industrially important enzymes so that kind of technology is called white biotechnology so mining oil recovery and production of fuels microbial production of ethanol and hydrogen uh, from plant biomass utilization of bio resources for health and industrial use soil remediation and environmental engineering etc these are all covering under white biotechnology similarly blue biotechnology the fish and only in uh, that uh, aquatic system so aquatic system we are implementing our biotechnology that is called blue biotechnology similarly red biotechnology production of vaccine and molecular medicine just to remember molecular medicine developing novel molecules for therapeutic use production of drugs and nutraceutical trophies and animal transgenesis 
regenerative medicine, gene therapy, and pharmacogenomics. These are all coming under red biotechnology. Green biotechnology covers and implementing our technological tools on plants, green plants, augmenting crop, forage, and forest production, conservation of plant biodiversity, production of hybrid crops, floriculture, horticulture, and natural products, production of drugs and nutraceuticals through crop biotechnology and plant drawn genesis. So these are, the, these are the different kind of the biotechnology implementing in different tools. Ultimately, we should conserve the biotechnology. So one of the technology may implemented or employed in for the conservation. Mostly this can, biotechnology conservation is called ex situ conservation or off-site conservation. So it may conservation method, the biodiversity and wildlife production is seldom sufficient process. Almost any species could be preserved ex situ if enough money were devoted it to it. So, but in practice, it is usually high quality species or races such as relatives of crops, domestic animals and charismatic species which are protected in this way. So this is an ex situ conservation. So the, there are a number of uh, the methods, there are a number of methods uh, uh, for employing the conservation of biodiversity, well, particularly ex situ conservation, that may be the gene bank, the seed bank, the tissue culture bank, sealing banks, conservation stands, cryo preservation of ova, sperm and embryo or pollen grains, and this kind of uh, techniques nowadays available and employing for the conservation of biodiversity. Yes, all this technology will be rooted with the biotechnology because uh, it is uh, the tools and techniques implemented or employed on the biodiversity. It may be the germ plasm, or it may be the uh, genetic library, or uh, DNA, or any other cDNA preparation, or cell-free DNA cloning by PCR method, anyway, but we should first touch with the uh, uh, biodiversity. So that's why it's a, uh, uh, that's a recently we are employing this kind of techniques, but it is not a ultimate, uh, 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 that ultimate method for conservation will see the negative impact also. There are a lot of advantages and disadvantages of ex situ conservation methods. So I have listed in every technology, seed bank, pollen banks, tissue culture bank, DNA banks, bio preservation of uh, ovum, sperm or embryo. So everywhere there are advantages and disadvantages because we are artificially preparing all these technology and employed against the natural pressure against to the natural pressure. That's why there are a lot of advantages and also same equally disadvantages are there in every technique. So you, know, you can see the seed bank, probicles readily available for use, but what is the use? In disadvantages, recalls and seed cannot be conserved. It will not regenerate, you cannot regenerate in the recall. So that is a disadvantage. Like said, pollen banks, minimum space is required for every conservation method, but only half of the genome is conserved in the pollen. And that's maybe, uh, uh, the, so you can see pollen is uh, only the, there's a gametic product, so there's a gamete, or uh, only half of the genome will be there. A tissue culture bank also has a lot of advantages. So every technology, we have uh, advantages, equally disadvantages. The exit to conservation, there are several technology also we have developed. You know, embryo micropropagation, somatic embryogenesis, clonal propagation, artificial insemination, these are all against to the nature. You must understand. And we have to think about it. This we are implementing several technology, but these are all against to the nature, against to the nature. So it will develop another one pressure on the, the same organism or same diversity. Our same diversity. So threats to germplasm of crop plants and its conservation need. Now, whatever we have. Implementing the same kind of technology, it will also deplete a, a number of uh, species naturally. So if we are implementing all these things also, it is depleting, it is a, a lot of species uh, naturally. So that is more important. So several varieties we are continuously producing by technology, breeding technology, or uh, transgenic plant means we are avoiding a particular gene, wild gene. Ultimately, that gene is disappeared from the uh, planet. 
So how can we again regenerate or uh, reintroduce that gene? You cannot. So ultimately, nowadays, all crop plants are like that. What we are using, the crop plants today, all are from hybrid varieties. What is the original variety? Where it is that original variety? You can't get it because already we have lost that original varieties. Number of original varieties we have lost because they are original varieties. They can grow any environment, even any climate. But now we are eliminating all such genes. That is environment tolerant genes we have eliminated. Only a selective genes are in our uh, that crop that improved crop varieties. That is a problem. We have lost many varieties like that. So what is our achievement today? You know, technology, okay, we can say that's a biotechnology, this are the advantages are uh, there, are, uh, this are the, every day we are inventing some new kind of technology. So what we have achieved so far, the chili means it has to give that a spicy taste today, isn't it? But today what we are producing, spiceless chili, what is the use of the chili? Chili means it has to spicy, it, that's a characteristic feature of chili. So no, nowadays we are producing uh, different colors. Only, only the uh, that color will uh, catching our eye, eye. So after that, uh, the chili characteristic, the original characteristic is a spicy character that has eliminated. That has eliminated. Now only for showy purpose, a showy appearance, uh, we are producing uh, the lot of uh, improvement. The, we are thinking this is improvement. No, it is not improvement. We have lost so many wild things, and we cannot create again that that that, that, that originally lost genes, isn't it? This is a more important, it's a negative. Yes, genetic engineering and biodiversity. So we are thinking now. Every uh, suppose if you are a student, you might be thinking yes, uh, oh, genetic engineering engineering is a beautiful science. Okay, we can make, we can modify any organism into our uh, desired way. Yes, theoretically, it is possible. You can change anything in DNA. It will, uh, the same effect, it will be, uh, that's expressed uh, the phenological traits. Okay, it's a natural thing. Or theoretically possible, any organism you can change that uh, genetic engineering are genetically modified. But what is the ultimate, uh, uh, the fact uh, or ultimate things of the, the genetic engineering? You can see that, uh, uh, the genetic engineering is said to the herald a better future. Many people you are thinking and brings with it promise of for security and better medicine. Me, me, there's a uh, medical therapies. Yet it also comes with questions, but it has uh, several questions. One of which is the impact of genetic engineering on biodiversity. There are concerns uh, that genetic engineering may potentially damage biodiversity as wild varieties. You must remember it is potentially damaged as wild varieties, the crossbreed with the genetically engineered ones. Particularly in the field of agriculture, the genetic engineering is a method where the genes of an organism is modified to achieve a desired characteristic. Genetically modified organisms often uh, contain traits that uh, that's unmodified or wild varieties do not have, isn't it? It's a common fact. So as an example, GM the uh, corn, corn, that's uh, our macacholum, corn is engineered to naturally resist pests while other crops have been genetically engineered to be resistant to herbicide. The organism have been engineered include animal and bacteria also. We can do anything, but what is the use? Ultimately, our original gene, original variety has lost the, because it also has several impact on the, and with the natural biodiversity. So several critics say that the lack of information regarding the potentially genetically modified crops on biodiversity or environment, we are not yet done. So if we have, if we have produced means immediately we released it for the, the cultivation. That is a most dangerous, uh, uh, the technology is threat to the wild diversity and uh, you know and uh, so one achievement so because we have uh, said to this a common example in India only we can say genetically modified crop means that is a BT cotton and BT cotton so you, uh, anybody uh, how uh, you can come across with many newspapers and news there's a negative impact of this BT cotton also 
So it is a hybrid, BT cotton is actually a hybrid crop. It is uh, by the Indian market, our economic uh, uh, that review, they have uh, boosted this uh, particular field. They show that uh, this is a positive result for the BT cotton, but originally it is not like that. It is not like that. There are several negative impact also there. So they have calculated only based on the production, the yield and the, the amount of yield, but uh, they are not at all assessed the negative impact on the field of uh, the cultivation of Bt cotton. Yes, it is. It is uh, sometimes this uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, genetically improved crops or genetically modified organism is highly threat to the human life also. Human life also. And next is animal uh, biotechnology. So there are a lot of ethical issues are arising from this animal biotechnology. So which molecular biological techniques are used to genetically engineer or modify the genome of animals in order to improve their suitability for pharmaceutical, agricultural or industrial applications. Nowadays, a lot of uh, that uh, several techniques used for the that animal biotechnology also. but. As equally, it has a lot of ethical issues, but we are not concerning about the ethical issues. Always all the research institute or researchers, we are trying to modify the animal genome for our own purposes. But we are not thinking about the long term effect of the that uh, uh, the technology. So it has to that animal has to survive or their germplasm may be preserved or all of their gene character may be preserve we do not know so only just we are modifying all the characters now you can see there uh, our kangayam bull kangayam kalai so original breed we have that is a very big question of question we don't have original breed of kangayam bull but america usa they have preserved our germplasm original kangayam bull is there uh, growing in american germplasm isn't it? Just to think about it, where we are now. It's uh, doing technology. We are employing technology in all the field, by, but we are uh, that uh, uh, we have a great loss of our own original diversity, our original uh, uh, the breeds of particularly animals, uh, the mature goat and the congayum bull and several of animals also nowadays is pet animals you can see chipipare dog or combay dog several the dog breeds also pure breeds we do not get you can't get so because the lot of technology we are breeding with some other things original breed has gone this is a, a, a the situation is now for implementing this kind of technology and as of now, we don't have any regulation of animal biotechnology also. There is no regulation, even national-wide or international-wide. There is no regulation for producing or implementing technology for this kind of things. That's why our uh, biodiversity is still uh, 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 it's going decline. So to date, no new regulation or laws have been enacted to deal with animal biotechnology and related issues. But every day we are implementing new techniques, but we are not having any regulation how to implement or what is the future effect and how will we impact on the, the long term or for our posterity. We are not thinking about it, but every day we are implementing a new kind of a technology. The main governing body for animal biotechnology and their products as uh, so is the FDA, but specifically there is no, uh, so any organization, they are not giving any regulation for uh, this ethical issues of this, uh, the animal biotechnology. You know, now, uh, but everything we are, uh, you know, technology is multidirectional and biodiversity is very vast. And what are the relationship between biodiversity and uh, uh, that uh, technology? So it has, uh, ultimately, we are exploiting the molecular level of biodiversity. We are uh, touching the molecular level. Biotechnology means it's only the molecular technology nowadays. So it provides very powerful tools for using uh, that is a direct impact or it is uh, advantages for critical assessment of biodiversity, especially genetic diversity, consequently the identification of potential of viruses. Yes, we can, because our world has a rich resource of diversity. Everything is, uh, it has, naturally it has a diversified, even genetically. 
but we can use directly we can conserve and the allied germplasm as it is used without the disturbing their genetic makeup that will be good but even though now we are modifying everything that is a problem it gives newer methods and guidelines for conservation biodiversity so we are implementing this technology but we should have a, a frame the guidelines for conservation and all these things for technology so it enhances the wise and efficient utilization of bioresources, both as a genetic resources for production and in the remediation of uh, altered or degraded ecosystems. So we should have a guideline for all this technology means it will be useful, but original variety, original germplasm must be conserved before going to do implement this all kind of biotechnology. And ultimately the biotechnology and the environment. So all this biodiversity is uh, combined or uh, together with the environment but even the environment we are saying even physical environment also that is also ultimately caused with the, the technology or uh, ethics with respect to the environment and biotechnology or uh, ecocentric biocentric anthropocentric because we are uh, seeing this problem only with uh, different sectors either ecocentric means ecosystem So where it will be cause or it will be advantages, disadvantages. So we must thoroughly assess before implementing any kind of technology. So biotechnology also it will impact on all the system, ecocentric level, biocentric level, and anthropocentric level also. It concerns with respect to threats on environment and human health. Ultimately, the human health will be affected. Or sometimes we are we can say the health will be improved because we are giving the, the improved food, the quality of the food may be improved through the technology, we can say. Only once uh, the kind of uh, that food, uh, food item you are seeing, but what are the other composition of the food? You can say it is uh, the vitamin enriched food, the vitamin, that's uh, possum of the rice is because of vitamin enriched. That's only the quality, uh, maybe it differs from the other rice. It is a vitamin and you can see the vitamin only you are saying what about other uh, characters what about other quality traits of the particular grain so only vitamins enough for our body no suppose if you are eating eating continuously basmati rice you will get uh, some other diseases also isn't it so we and th that is naturally how a lot of varieties is a balance with uh, the characteristic of uh, even biochemical level but we are selecting only the particular character in any one uh, uh, that's a uh, uh, traits for through the improving that this technology so this is a problem and ethical issues uh, where the act of modifying dna so so far i think uh, there is no regulation for this uh, technology so dna modification anybody can do any organism there is no any regulation and ownership of biological innovations uh, can humans own life isn't it all ultimately this uh, this this will affect to the human life not only human life the all human environment it can be affected by the uh, technology yes finally ethical issues in biotechnology so there are a lot of ethical issues are there uh, so the development in biotechnology technology during the last few decades uh, has raised a lot of ethical controversy isn't it so that is a that is a uh, the ethical issues uh, that is ethical issues uh, you know the biotechnological agents used in environmental are uh, it's a highly uh, it's a highly affect to all kind of things so critics have generated different arguments while opposing this technology which uh, may conveniently be divided into two kinds which are uh, intrinsic argument and extrinsic argument so we can say this eth ethical issues can be classified intrinsic and extrinsic for example intrinsic uh, it maintains that the biotechnology is objectionable in itself objectionable yes extrinsic means it's non-objectionable so here like that uh, some uh, somebody today's uh, argument is biotechnology is playing with god so extrinsic uh, uh, critics are saying biotechnology is playing with god so animal biotechnologies are also break down the natural species boundaries in uh, in the sense of extrinsic argument so animal biotechnology is ethically wrong uh, so because of uh, uh, because of uh, 
uh, its negative consequences are human beings, animals, and environment. So it is playing with God argument enough to oppose animal biotechnology. Is it is it enough? No. So we are we got responses to such a question in uh, uh, in which uh, he uh, argues that in the biopolitical context it goes to political level also. So today we are arguing like that biotechnology. So that's why it gives a lot of benefits to the society one side that is advantages. But at the same time it also creates a certain concerns among the general public some people rejected totally biotechnological applications and suggested that uh, uh, recombinant dna technology should not be developed at all like that extrinsic uh, uh, the, uh, that are human also it has come so these are all several ethical issues in biotechnology yes impact of biotechnology on biodiversity so this is uh, actually it's our uh, the the uh, concluding uh, uh, of uh, all those uh, factors are impact on the biotechnology there are two ways one is direct impact and another one is indirect impact isn't it so direct impact means several non target effects on beneficial and native organisms by genetically modified uh, uh, species have been reported several things an example is the transgenic bt cotton uh, which if affects a wide array of non target insects such as butterflies moths and beetles some GM crops have been shown to affect soil ecosystems by decreasing the rate of decomposition of organic waste, affecting carbon and nitrogen levels and decreasing the diversity of soil microbial populations. So in several ways our genetically modified system may be affected to the environment, ultimately it will reach to the human human life. So another possible direct impact of GMOs raised for conferring viral resistance is the likely emergence of new viruses which new biological characteristics through recombination. So now everybody suspect, even many countries suspected that Corona also like the came, uh, came like that. It is a modified virus, a recombinant virus escaped from some laboratory. Is no many people have suspected, uh, su suspected like that. So adverse impact on biodiversity through the introduction of GMOs may also result from disturbance of the dynamic population equilibrium uh, of ecosystems. So population size of native taxa may be reduced by the enhanced ability of GMOs to evade natural habitats of native species. Yes, this is. Uh, so we have to, uh, to study, already we have affected uh, this kind of things. Now, suppose if you are cultivating a, uh, that genetically modified crop, so anyway, this gene flow through the pollen crine or through the pest or through the other things, through the bacteria, it will go to other plants too. So what will be the effect that we do not know, but we are not yet assessed all these things. Only just we have trial with three or four years. So any GM crop is produced and will, it will go for a cultivation. It is a pathetic situation for our natural diversity. So micro propagation and also we can say micro propagation is a technology, but this also have a lot of uh, the, the critical negative points also there. Uh, so uh, we can say clonal production because it is producing only in the chemical environment. How it will, uh, we do not know how it will affect the chemical environment on the genetic makeup of the plant. That's why it is producing the somoclonal variation. So somoclonal variation is one of the advantage, advantages of uh, uh, micropropagation or the uh, that's uh, uh, biotechnology. But it is also same way it is a disadvantage we are selecting the only particular trait and all other nat the natural traits we avoided so that last ultimately suppose it is a allied species so this is the things and you know uh, so indirect impact so what are the indirect impact of uh, uh, the biodiversity uh, or biotechnology on biodiversity it is uh, uh, our predominantly socio-economic issue so uh, we are doing technology or we are implementing on the field level or uh, trial level and anyway it is causing to the uh, socio-economic one it is directly bounded with the human life it operated through human economic and social systems so finally it will affect the social system also indirect impacts on biotechnology are immense and of 
very great relevance to people in developing countries who relate directly on biodiversity for their sustenance. So nowadays, uh, already I told you that, uh, shown the map also, almost all the world countries, they are now growing uh, the uh, hybrids or GMO crops for uh, uh, use of their food sustenance, food sustenance. Everybody we are depending on the modified crops for their food because our land sources is small, our utilizing human population is very large, very large. That is small, from the small land area, it has to give more production than only we can get the food. We can supply food for all our mouth. So this is the reason only we are saying that the economic, socio-economic way, we are implementing a lot of technology and every day. But what about our future? The future or long term, a long term process of the same thing, it will be survived. Okay, it may not happen. Today, one variety, that one variety, our genetically modified crop can yield a very good amount. It will yield very high yield and it will grow very nicely and it is having a good cost and rate in the market and everything. But tomorrow it may not because this environment will not be there in tomorrow. Tomorrow environmental changes or climatic changes, it also affect to our technology because environment is a driver of evolution. It will select the character. What are the character? It has to survive in the environment. That character only it will continue, uh, the, uh, continually associated with the uh, this natural one. It will grow. But artificially producing, we are all these characters in plants and animals and anything. So our technology artificially we are producing the things. How it will survive in the changing environment? We have to think about the the climate change or environmental changes. Either it this uh, as uh, our genetically modified crops or things may be survived in the future environment? No, you can't get answer. You can't say. So this impact themselves are the results of human responses to the changes in relative cost and prices of biotechnologically derived items. Uh, so these are the important things. Biotechnological methods leads to the identification of a plant material for an important pharmaceutical use. I have already told that many examples from the biodiversity is yielding the pharmaceutical medicines. So how many days you can get it? How many days you can get it from that one? So we have a lot of species. They are yielding because every species it has a very trace amount. You know, our curcuma is having curcuminoids. Several types of curcuminoids are there. That is potentially anti-cancer. Yes, regularly we are using curcuminoids. The, the manjal illa the item in a part like a So every food item we have adding a small amount of that curcuma, the turmeric powder. But why we are getting cancer? Oh, that content is not enough to control or enough to combat with your body. If we are using very trace amount because the phytochemicals in every plant is a that is a potential chemical to control the disease, but it's very trace amount. It's a very small quantity of the trace amount of uh, uh, that's chemical phytochemical is there in plants or animals like that so that is not, that is not enough but we can say these are the important things potential thing this many number of species is there but we we can improve we can extract okay we can do anyway it is a artificial technology employed on that you can get the improved content but what you have to concern at the same time diversity diversity is important we have to maintain the diversity and extract, extract the things from the diversity, okay, it's not a problem. And another thing, one word we can use sustainable, but that is not relevant today. We cannot use sustainable for anything. How can we, we are exploiting much, how can you use sustainable exploitation or sustainable utilization? That word is very humbug in science and we cannot say that it's sustainable. We cannot sustain now also with the diversity. Once you start to extract anything, that is a great loss of diversity only. You are exploiting or over exploiting the things means that we are damaging the diversity. We can't replace. We can't replace just to think about it. Any technology we can uh, do and we can provide the useful things to the present day population, either human population or anything, but future is 
that is a very questionable one. So this would raise the value of the material resulting in increased collection pressure on the plant, which in turn would lead to overexploitation and the species loss. And species loss, ultimately, the overexploitation, it will lead to the, the species loss. So there are uh, also negative impacts due to genetic engineering. So this is because the genetic engineering use viral vector to carry the functional genes into human body, either human body or any other things. Anyway, we are using the viral vector. So the constituents of the viral genes on the human body are not yet known not known you can do the genetic engineering what for using that vector what are the effect of the vector gene in that uh, organism suppose the host organism we do not know we do not know many body we are saying it's a function less in the host after the introduction of the uh, the main desired gene what are the other effect of the vector genes either it is doing anything inside the, the host body or our improved plan we do not know the so these things, the functional genes might replace the other genes besides the mutated genes. So this can also cause different from of the disease of human. So this also may lead to extinction of human beings. So this kind of technology may, in future, it will affect to the human life also. Genetic engineering, we can say, anybody is saying, just we are, uh, uh, that's a uh, uh, protocol we are just drawing means, uh, we can say the desire seen inserted to the viral vector, the viral vector, maybe it is inserted into the, any other for releasing the desired gene into the human gene. What are the effect of vi the viral gene, the vector plasmid genes in, in, on the that host body? We do not know, isn't it? So therefore, the genetic engineering is considered to have uh, several disadvantages in human life, in human life. So these are the things you must just, um, I, uh, as far as possible, I have listed out all the areas and their impacts of uh, biotechnology on biodiversity. And uh, thank you, thank you one and all for uh, your patient listening. Uh, and uh, on, once again, I must thank to all the organizers uh, and the Comunod Arts College and their premises uh, and uh, yeah, that's opportunity to, uh, that's, uh, uh, I express my opinion on biotechnology and biodiversity. Thank you one and all. If you have any doubts and queries, you can send to my mail or you can ask now. Thank you. Thank you once again. Karpsami? Hello. Yes, sir. Ah, sir, 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 good evening, sir. <laughs> excellent, excellent, Karpsami. Very um, uh, most informative, first of all. Then most of the things what you have collected in your own experience, so how the biotechnological tools are useful by processing the biodiversity for the welfare of human beings. So very nice talk. And um, uh, the two areas uh, from your talk, I came to understand the two important areas, agriculture side and healthcare side, we are having a lot of bio resources in our country. So the proper technological development and implementation with the environmental security, that is most important one. Very yes, lastly, you have told that when you um, uh, go for the genetical engineering, everything, at present it is okay, it is very um, beneficial, but uh, later on, in course of time, what kind of the negative impacts it will give, we don't know. So yes, we must very be careful about the implementation of all these technologies. Still, we are having large number of wild relatives of our cropland. The ones are available, <clears throat> but only one or two percent only. We tapped the genes from that kind of plants, and we are utilizing. So still, we are having enormous scopes in improving yes, the crop variety by taking the genes from our wild relatives. Similarly, in another side, the healthcare system side. We are having very good number of plants. We told that uh, in the Nilgiri biosphere alone, we are having more than 56 species of uh, plants, which are giving the campesin an anti-cancer element. So proper identification and utilization of these plants, cultivation, through cultivation, that will be definitely more effective for countries like India. Very good talk, uh, 
Karup Swami sir, very good. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank, you, sir. thank you very much, dear sir, for your support. I, I, I must thank you and also the institute. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Session is now open for discussion. Participants can post their query either in chat box or you can uh, ask directly to sir. Sir, yeah, please. Uh, I am Dr. Shagran from Kerala. Sir, uh, good evening, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Very excellent, uh, excellent, and I can say that it is very energetic, also. Very energetic. <laughs> also. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, very happy to see you in that uh, moment uh, because of my professor, Dr. Balsami, sir, has uh, told me to join. It's very interesting and a very informative class. Thank you, uh, people. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You have covered all the areas. I think, uh, yes, uh, Balsami sir uh, is uh, rightly mentioned. Yes, uh, covered all the areas, uh, especially the negative side of the biotechnology. Uh, it's very important, especially in the agriculture field, as you told. And uh, sir, my doubt is that, uh, like uh, embryonic stem cell research and all, uh, in the medical field is very good uh, thing. But uh, the ethical issues, as yes. you told, uh, the adverse eff effect of uh, this. Uh, Red biotechnology, and you have mentioned that it is there. Is, there will not be any uh, committee to regulate these things, isn't it? Uh, no, sir. Uh, even uh, today also, we don't have any the permanent committee for uh, regulating all those things. So, but technology we are implementing every day in all the fields, not only in uh, that uh, embryonic, even human artificial uh, insemination and everything. You know, we have uh, technology. We are using uh, day to day life. But we don't have any regulation committees, uh, permanent committee in our uh, national or uh, the, the national level. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Very informative. Well, thank you so much for your uh, nice talk. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Since there are no questions. From the participant side, we'll move on towards the next, day, next session, sir. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Karpasami, sir, for sharing your valuable time and thoughts with us on this auspicious day. Sir, really, you have explained us well about the reason for loss and development of biodiversity and applications of biotechnology in agriculture and medicinal field. Your explanation on biotechnology depends on biodiversity is really awesome. You have really justified on your part. Lots of informations we have gathered from you in terms of genetically modified and engineered products. Honestly, your talk has made justice on the topic biotechnological interventions of biodiversity and human well-being. Thank you once again, sir. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you for this uh, giving me opportunity to present this platform. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. Important announcement to the participants. Before we enter into the valedictory ceremony on this short-term course, I would like to announce few announcements on behalf of the organizing committee. Since there are about 200 candidates registered for this program, and only limited certificates can be distributed to the participants per day, you are humbly requested to wait for about 10 days to receive the course material and the certificates to your registered email IDs. Apart from this, the Department of Botany, Kongunadu Arts and Science College, Coimbatore, is organizing a one-year diploma course on biodiversity. It comprises of two semesters with 800 marks, first semester with three major paper and one practical paper, and two semester, and the second semester with two major subject-oriented paper and one project, and that project alone comprises 200 marks out of the total. Here, we would like to inform you that the course is affiliated to Bharatiya University. You can get further details for the above course from Kongunadu College website. Also, now the coordinators and the management team is planning to conduct online PG diploma course in biodiversity. Interested candidates can apply for this by checking the information that will be available on our college website in future. The eligibility criteria for both online and offline courses is 
the candidate must completed his or her bachelor's degree in the field of science. Thanks for the patience. The announcements are over. We'll move on to the second session on the final day, that is the valedictory ceremony. On behalf of the organizing team, I would happily welcome the coordinator of PG Diploma in Biodiversity course, Dr. D. Murthy, sir, Assistant Professor in Botany, Kongunodu Arts and Science College, Coimbatore, to welcome the gathering. Please, sir. Uh, yes, thank you, ma'am. Uh, a very warm good evening to all of you present here to this short term course in biodiversity, status, services, and management practices organized by Department of Botany, PG Diploma in Biodiversity, Kongunodu Arts and Science College, Coimbatore. On behalf of Botany Department and on my personal behalf, we are delighted to offer a gracious welcome to all of you to this valedictory ceremony. In this moment, I would like to welcome our most honorable and respected Secretary and Director, Dr. C. A. Vasini Madam, Ponganada Arts and Science College, Coimbatore. I would like to extend a cordial welcome to our respected principal, Dr. M. Lachmana Samisar, Dean R&D, Dr. S. Paul Samisar, Dean Academics, Dr. S. R. Madan Sangasar, CEO, Dr. V. Sindhu Samisar, and the Academic Coordinators, Dr. N. Nagarajan Sar, to the short-term course in biodiversity. Next, I, I would like to invite, uh, heartily welcome to all guest speakers who have participated in this event of short-term course in biodiversity. I wholeheartedly welcome our respected Dr. V. Balasandramaniam sir, former principal, Pongnad Arts and Science College. And K. Dr. K. Penmuli, ma'am, uh, today's chairperson of this event. It's my pleasure to welcome the organizing secretary, coordinators, and the organizing committee members of the department. Finally, I would like to welcome all participants who are gathered in this occasion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. To establish true self-esteem, we must concentrate on our successes and not forget about the failures and the negatives in our lives. I am privileged to welcome the principal of Kongunodu Arts and Science College, Pambatur, Dr. M. Lakshmana Swami, sir, to deliver the valedictory address. Please, sir. Good evening to one and all gathered here for the short term course in biodiversity, status, services, and management practices. I am much privileged to our president, Dr. M. R. Chami, sir and secretary and syndicate member of Bharati University, Dr. C.A. Vasuki, madam, for making and encouraging our staff members to conduct a well-subject-oriented course for the betterment of the future generation. Our college provides excellent learning opportunities to the students and serves as a great platform to showcase their skills, start with the few institutional courses. In this connection, Department of Botany is providing PG Diploma course in Biodiversity from, from the year 2018 onwards. This PG Diploma in Biodiversity and the Department of Botany organized and conducted this short term course in Biodiversity over the past nine days from 1st September to today, 10th September 2020 for the betterment of the world global biodiversity forms, sustainability for the future biodiversity and to have a comprehensive understanding of the science of species interactions for ecological balance and environmental security. This event made a platform for technical exchange of knowledge among scientists, professionals, and the researchers under one roof. I anticipate that through in-depth reviews and discussions, it will facilitate the exchange of most updated research findings and comprehensive better measures to achieve a more rational balance between development and conservation. I convey my special thanks to guest speakers from various institutions from India and also from other parts of the globe, Elliot and the participants with their valuable thoughts and they shared their valuable times in spite of the pandemic situation prevailing across the planet. I heartily congratulate the organizing team of the course on behalf of the management 
for making good efforts to take time and arrange, arrange this course in a short period of time and organized well in due course of time. Since the global resources are decreasing at an alarming rate, I would suggest this generation to make positive con conservation measures to protect our planet and to save the lives of the people. Since the world lives already getting partially disturbed by the novel viruses and various external forces. And finally, I would appreciate Dr. K. Tenmudi, HOD of Botany, Dr. K. Kartiga, Organizing Secretary, and coordinator, coordinators, Dr. D. Murthy, Dr. B. Ravati, and Dr. R. Rega, and Organs Committee members for producing priceless efforts for, for the prosperity of the future generation. And uh, in the biodiversity, uh, when I'm handling the paper, I'm very much attracted. That's one topic that is the uh, people's participation by biodiversity conservation is the Chipko movement. Apico movement and the Rico River Dam campaign. So the Chipko movement, the name of the movement comes from the word embrace. As the villagers hugged the trees and prevented the contractors from felling them. Although the uh, Uttarakhand's condolence of the tribal people of Uttarakhand region there, or dam cutter the Kaga Bundu, or forest on the cut under the Koranga, government officials. Anger could be a tribal pupils and the Martha Kati Pudicite, Ni Martha Yen a veteran Munadi, even the Ni Martha Kat Martha Vetano Yen Yangla Vetipotini Martha Vetri of the Solanga. So that movement is called as the Chipko. Chipko means that they hug or embrace Martha Kati Pudicite, Andalak Vandi in a Kundu Makal Matile, or Padika the Makal Matili, but we will put a Yurkum Bode, Namala, there's a BSc, MSc, MPhil, PhD, Doctorate, and a DSc, Doctor of Science graduates. That is my question. Then another problem is in Walaya region, you know, Ororu Masamum, Ororu Yani Vande, Walaya Rile, and the railway track la Adibatu on the Sagade. It is an elephant corridor. Walaya Dam will run the and the Kanji Kodo or Palaka to Varavariko, Pathe, Pathapan the kilometer Pathina. Once upon a time, it is an elephant corridor. Due to the encroachment and urbanization, in the elephant corridor, there are resorts. Resorts are dam, railway track, and railway track. One is for passenger train. That is highway NH47. This is the foothills of the Walaya, Malaya di Varthal. One track le tapi chalo, ino track le andi very difficult to escape by the elephants. So idal la andi pating na, idal for the reason for the biodiversity loss. So this type of the seminars or conference or diploma courses definitely give us a solution how to protect the biodiversity loss. Then. I heartily welcome and thank all the, the participants once again. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All that begins well ends well. We are now nearer to the destination place of our journey on the biodiversity course. I would like to invite Dr. K. Kartika, ma'am, Assistant Professor and Organizing Secretary of the course. Department of Botany, Kongunado Arts and Science College, Tour, to summarize the report on the course and to propose the vote of thanks. Please, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. Myself, Dr. K. Kartiga, serving as an assistant professor in the Department of Botany, Kongunado Arts and Science College, Kaimbatur. It is my honor and privilege to present the report on the virtual short-term course in biodiversity, status, services, and management practices organized and conducted by the Department of Botany, PG Diploma in Biodiversity in our college from the period of about nine days from 1st to September 2022, 10th to September 2020 at 3 to 4 p.m. In total, 236 participants were registered for this course from 78 renowned institutions of all over the India. Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is a progress. 
working together a success the nine days short term course in biodiversity was inaugurated on 1 9 at 3 pm dr k tain moli ma'am assistant professor and head department of botany of our college welcomed the gathering the presidential address was delivered by the principal of our college dr m lakshmanaswamy sir he addresses his hearty wishes for the short term course in biodiversity for being a successful and memorable one dr s r madan shankar sir dean academics of our college offered felicitation in his address address he highlights the importance of biodiversity in world level in plenary session dr a rajesh rajshegren sir scientist forest ecology and climate change division institute of forest genetics and tree breeding kaimatur delivered an excellent talk on the topic invasive alien species versus indigenous biodiversity in india the first day of the biodiversity course was successfully completed with the vote of thanks given by dr k kartika organizing secretary of this short term course in biodiversity on 29 2020 the second day of the course was commenced with the resource person dr k kadrishan sir honorary professor center of advanced study in marine biology faculty of marine science annamala university on the topic coastal biodiversity and ecosystem of india the third day of the course was honored with the presence of our esteemed dean research and development of our college dr s palsami sir enlightened us upon the topic biodiversity services threats and possible conservation measures dr a balasubramaniam sir professor and head department of silviculture and natural resource management forest college and research institute meetupalayam delivered his lecture on the topic forest ecology and biodiversity on the fourth day of the course on 5 9 2020 the fifth day of the course was enhanced by dr g a divagaran sir director blue bay coastal research foundation chennai highlighted with the topic coastal and marine biodiversity of gujarat some glimpses on 7 9 2020 the sixth day of the course was started with renowned resource person dr arun kumar roy megato sir senior scientist and head terrestrial ecology division gujarat institute of desert ecology gujarat delivered a lead lecture on the topic dry land ecology and biodiversity seventh day of the course was handled by dr srinivasan d jayaraman sir assistant professor department of biomedical science faculty of science university tunku abdul rahman jalan university malaysia delivered his speech on the topic marine algal diversity on 9 9 2020 the eighth day of the course was commenced with the resource person dr p premasuda ma'am assistant professor department of nano science and technology varadiyar university coimbatore with the topic microorganisms a diversified life forms the final day 10 9 2020 of the course was fulfilled with the presence of dr s karp sami sir associate professor in botany the majro college madurai on his highlighted topic biotechnological innovations of biodiversity and human well being a couple of staff members from the botany department of our college welcomed and introduced the resource person to the participants and also they proposed the vote of thanks the course was hosted by betty thomas phd research scholar of our department and technically handled by mr haridas lab in charge of our college on the, on an average of 160 participants from various institutions in nation wide attended the course our resource persons enlightened their ideas and visions for future generation in their different areas of interest in biodiversity at this moment our organizing team all heartily thank all the nine resource persons individually for accepting our invitation and also for their effective presentation and support for the successful completion of the of this short term course in biodiversity the organizing team conveys the heartfelt thanks to our president dr m archami sir 
Honorable Secretary and Director, Dr. C. A. Vasugi, ma'am. Principal, Dr. M. Lakshmana Swami, sir. Dean R and D, Dr. S. Paul Swami, sir. Dean Academics, Dr. S. R. Madan Shankar, sir. Uh, CEO, Dr. Chinnu Swami, sir. And Academic Coordinator and our former HOD, Dr. N. Nagarajan, sir, for their continuous support and guidance for the effective completion of this course. And I am very much grateful to the chairperson of this course and our beloved head of the department, Dr. K. Tenmuli, ma'am. Coordinators, Dr. D. Murthy, sir. Dr. P. Revati, ma'am. And Dr. R. Rekha, ma'am. And other organizing committee members of our department for their timely help. Last but not least, it is an immense pleasure to thank all the participants to come, uh, coming together in the beginning and keeping together in progress and united together to make this course a grand success. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Final announcement for the participants. Before you leave the link, make sure you all have filled the feedback form and have written the online examination. The questions for the online examination will be available on the feedback link. Participants, surely you will receive your course material and certificates on your registered email ID within 10 days of time. For further inquiries on course or any details, you can contact our organizing team and further details of course on our website. All reserved and unreserved appreciation and credits goes to Almighty God, who made this short-term course a grand success. Thank you all. Thank you once again.